I need that. Good afternoon. Good evening. We're going to call this meeting to order at 6.33 p.m. Oh, I'm loud tonight. Sorry. If everybody could please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag. First up on the agenda is to accept the minutes of the April 19th, 2016 meeting. Make a motion to accept. Second. I have a motion to accept and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Next on the list is Region 2 Emergency Preparedness Rep. Sarah. I guess she's not going to make it this evening. Um, I know that we've had some correspondence. She's getting us some different things from Region 2, which will be beneficial to us for doing emergency preparedness and things like that. Um, I know you guys did have the drill, I don't even think. So I think we're pretty much all set with that. That went well. Yeah. I know, Ted, you were in charge it of went. that. Ted was in charge. It went very well. Excellent. Yeah. All, all I know from that event is that we need to get our trailer in shape like that of Charlton's. Charlton's. It was pretty amazing, the organization. I think they had professionals organize it, though, um, from their fire department. It was the woman that was there from the CERT team. Um, she's the head of the, the, I don't remember her name. I know she said she went through yeah. when I had a meeting with them and did that entire trailer. So yeah. pretty impressive. Theirs was all set up and ours was all in boxes. Yeah, so that's something that hopefully um, Sarah and Paul will be working on. So, Okay. Up next, item number three is the inspections of nail salons. So at first, I'm going to talk to um, Tom. We've all reviewed different policies. We've decided we want to make a policy for the health and safety of the salons. And I know we read over some, and you have one that covers everything that we're looking for. I, I really believe that uh, this one that's uh, used by the city of Boston is... Uh, uh, a pretty much exactly what we're looking for. What it does is it's very it's simple to the point. Um, it covers all the bases that we're looking for. I would think that, uh, and it even has a checklist for uh, inspection criteria on the on the last page. Uh, simple things, check off list, all very well informed. About the only thing that I didn't see addressed in there, um, I would like to see is that if there's any reported. Um, infections or anything that that come about as a result or potentially as a result of of uh, any service that's done uh, at least make it recordable and and all of that so that uh, everybody's prepared for any action um, so I, again what i've done is i provided copies of the city of boston one foot to you um, and i would suggest that you peruse it and maybe we take it up next month if everything looks okay. I would also suggest that we have, uh, um, I guess we have a couple of practitioners that might be interested in providing some input. Yes. Um, and if we could ask them to review it and provide input to us, yep. either at the next meeting or uh, sometime before that. Okay. Um, that would work out very nicely. Then. Uh, Board can render a decision on what to do. I know that we did ask some practitioners to come tonight with some information that they have um, about implementing, you know, safe practices in salons and stuff. So uh, we'll take a few minutes, have them, um, the ones that are here. I know we have Lori from Prestige Salon. If Lori, you'd like to come up. Do I have anyone else here? No? Okay. Yeah, you have a seat right up here, and um, just to introduce yourself, and um, basically, I'll give you a little intro, too. The, your, your salon was featured on Fox 25 yes. for being a safe salon. Um, for basically being a contributor um, to educate the consumers and things to look for in a safe salon, and this protocol that I've implemented in my salon 
exceeds the current state standards in the State Board of Cos Cosmetology um, for health and safety, infection control, um, high aseptic practices. So that's basically what I'm trying to promote and to educate the consumer. And these changes, if they do become implemented, would be a wonderful addition to the town of Dudley, to the salons in the town of Dudley, and to the, the public. So because of your story being featured on the news and everything, we did um, get some information, some people mm -hmm. in, in, requ in quest, requesting information as to if that was something. And as a board, we decided that it definitely is something that we wanted to look into. So we figured we know that you have a lot of information being so if you want to just maybe give us a few key points and then um, we'll have, definitely have you review. I know you're familiar with the yes, Boston. Yes, so. um, I have copies of that as well. Um, times have changed, basically. And 52% um, of Americans have a chronic illness currently. And diabetes has risen considerably. And when they started record keeping in 1934 for diabetes, it was at a 3.4% rate. In 2010, it was 6.8 percent. Currently, it is 11.4 um, percent. So those numbers have gone up considerably, and they're um, projected to get higher. And that puts the general consumer at higher risk when they receive services in salons. So emerging mi microbes are also out there, superbugs, C. diff, MRSA, staph infections, mycobacterium, uh, hepatitis C. This is, I just found this out this weekend because I attended a um, MediNail Summit. Um, it's an affiliation with podiatrists and nail technicians. This is a growing trend. Podiatrists deciding to see the need to um, embrace nail technicians in their practices. Um, this is recent news. I just found out that salons are under the radar from the CDC for more cases of hepatitis C being contracted in salons. So these bugs have built up hard cell walls, and they're known to be resistant to our current modes of disinfection qualities. So promotion is um, autoclave sterilization. It's, it's, a no, it's, it's a guaranteed kill. It's a verifiable form of sterilization. You're not assuming that that salon practitioner, professional, is mixing the chemicals correctly on a daily basis. Barbicide is only efficacy for 24 hours. If it's contaminated, you should change it immediately. The, the protocols are not being followed all the time correctly, so there's no way to verify to the consumer that they're being applied correctly. So it puts the public at health as well as the um, practitioner. So a lot of inf misinformation is also given out within this industry. As one myself, I go to my supply store, I go take a class, and it's, oh, use this, this is great. UV sterilizer boxes, um, they're banned by the city of Boston in that program that, to not to be used because they're just a holding cell. They're not, but the many salons, and I've personally visited many, that are using them as their only mode of sanitation because that's what, is, this, it's the information that's being given to them from improper sources. So they're putting, implements and packages and putting them in these blue light boxes and yeah, thinking not that's acceptable. not adequate and it's They're not acceptable. So in essence, and fungal spores are not killed, they're very hard to kill. The best way to kill many fungal spores is through autoclave or dry heat sterilization. So the current chemical methods are not adequate. So that's why there's so many high cases of fungal infections being transmitted from, you know, person to person in salons. So it is it, it is a um, it is a very serious issue that I've been very passionate about getting the word out there, being featured, written many articles, and just always educating the public. So not to take up too much more time, um, and anybody who wants to reach out to me, I'd be happy to share more information. And I'm very excited. I hope this change takes place, because if Dudley does it, I'm going to go to Webster, <laughs> and I'm going to go to Oxford. <laughs> um, so I thank you very much for your time. And I, I could go on and on. If you want me to, I will, but. No, we appreciate that. The gist, and, um, gist of it. I do know one other uh, thing that we just, Tom and I discussed today that was um, the ventilation system. Huge, huge. And, you know, that it is enforceable by the mechanical building code, mm -hmm. and these are things <coughs> that 
you don't always know about and that is something else that we will be looking as well and I it's in the ventilation is stated you know and those are things mm -hmm. that and that I know over a period of time could be addressed right PPEs right. are also a huge um, area that's very um, lacking that not a lot of practitioners are um, using gloves masks when necessary um, you know just protecting their you know long sleeves all of the particles and chemicals we work with are you know it constant contact you develop dermatitis sensitivities there's high cases of um, people that have left the industry due to asthmatic conditions um, from lung problems you know breathing we the, the there was a video that I recently shared yeah that was featured on one of that Aerovex the source capture system um, that shows how much of the airborne particles are in the air and it sucks it up right at the source when you're defiling even with just a regular nail file um, so that's definitely a big issue and just trying to inform the public of things to look for that's that's my biggest advocacy like, yes the change is going to be great but getting the information out to the public because most consumers just don't understand what to look for the pedicure tubs plumbed the pipeless the plumbed they need to be flushing the proper EPA disinfectant liquid through it for 10 minutes after each and every pedicure client gets mm -hmm. out of that chair I know that's not being done the new pipeless version is a propellant a magnetic propellant that's the newer if they're five years or newer and the salons have updated that propeller is um just blows air instead a lot of salons got away from the plumbed pipe because it was a recirculate so what was happening is they weren't properly flushing them after clients and mycobacterium builds up in the, the plumbing and then it just gets reflushed in your pedicure bath so that caused a lot of problems especially for women who shave anybody who has a little bug bite on their open we're supposed to work on healthy intact skin and nails and we know life happens a hangnail a bug bite a paper cut now we have an open portal in our skin which is potential for infection never mind the fact that we work with I cut people it happens I'm working with sharp tools accidents happen um, proper um, bloodborne pathogen education should be included in this um, for salon employees all salon employees even hairstylists they cut their hands all the time are they following proper protocol once that blood is now out in the salon environment um, what else did I want to talk about the autoclave is verifiable that's what I like about it I currently have been using one every cycle has to be recorded log sheets have to be kept for after a year am I not mistaken that's in their paperwork so every cycle that's run in an autoclave if you choose to go autoclave a dry heat has to be recorded so that's verifiable to my insurance company were I to ever be sued in a liability practice suit um, right now our blue liquid you don't know if they're doing it correctly or not you know they well I mean it they're all licensed individuals or we're hoping that everybody out there that's practicing is a licensed individual right and they're supposed to be educated they've already demonstrated that they know the rules right whether they follow them or not is correct something different there correct. is an inspection uh, agency mm -hmm. there is the uh, um, uh, the department of uh, division of cosmetology that's supposed to be out doing their inspections um, Barbicide is expensive to purchase and I know how much I was going through as a salon owner when I was following the proper protocol because I've been in this business for 30 years and I was an instructor myself for many years so I know I've heard horror stories from people using Windex to make it look like blue liquid you know I people there are many salons out there that cut corners and they're not following proper protocol and we talked about you know language barriers being an issue in many cases okay do you okay. guys have any questions I know I this is right up I'm this, review is, all this, and this is right up your alley I know yeah, I know so, so. that's why it's a harder <laughs> sell for gentlemen they don't realize I mean I have a lot of gentlemen clients come in in today's world there are many people that can't see their feet that can't reach their feet that can't hold a pair of toenail clippers to cut their feet and I just generalize using pedicures because it is a big part of our nail industry now which is why podiatrists are starting to see the light of you know merging with nail technicians and you know we are the 
we're the nail care specialists, you know, and podiatrists are seeing the need for that. So it's, it's happening, and that's where most of the infections are, are being obtained. That, and I want to point out, I myself have young daughters that have gone and gotten their nails done in salons, and they use the electric file. Those metal carbide and diamond drill bits, e-file bits, also need to be sanitized after each use. And oftentimes you see them hanging from the table, the same e-file bit full of dust, huge percentage of time that e-file bit when it's sweeping around the cuticle area often nicks them. I've had my own experiences. I've gone to a lot of places and I, I know what's going on out there. I've seen pictures of girls that have gotten cut and the technician took a bottle of nail glue and glued the cut shut. I mean I could share a lot of, you could just google nail salon horror stories and you'll come up with a lot of you know really bad things. But that's where I want to point out a lot of the e-files um, are not being sanitized correctly. And files are being reused. The paper boards, the long boards are being reused. And that's a big no-no. That's part of the, the salon inspection. That's addressed in here yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yep. Disposables. I mean, they're, buy them in bulk, they're cheap enough. But they're not doing that, especially with pedicures. I've seen them file toenails and put the same file back in a drawer. Credo blades. There's a lot of things that are being done um, that aren't professional and not, not under the scope of our practice to be performed in a salon environment. Okay. So thank you very much. I'm very excited for this opportunity and I'd be, you know, I'm looking forward to um, any being a help in any way I can. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else on that? Um, that takes care of that subject. That's good. Thank you. All right. Up next is um, the proposed vapor bar regulation, we're going to have a discussion about it. Um, get organized. We did receive a letter um, from Cynthia inquiring about this. Um, I know we did touch on it briefly last month and we said we would like her to see if she would come in and maybe give us some more information on it so we could obtain. Is Cynthia here? She confirmed she'd be here. Okay. Um, why do do you want? Does anyone have any th information they'd like to discuss regarding this? Huh? If there's a need for a um, some regulation from the town, you know, we've done some research, like we have with the nail salons and. Mm -hmm. It's at the point now where we'd like to have a discussion with someone knows that business. So uh, at this point, I don't think it's necessary to have a conversation about it. Okay. So um, I guess we'll just, she confirmed, table. yeah, we'll table it. She confirmed she was going to be here. If she happens to respond back, we'll go from there. Yeah, I'd like to hear from her before I make. Yeah, because you it know would I be, have, yeah. yeah, it would be uh, interesting. Before we get into any we did, there's nothing really to talk yeah. about. No, if she's not here, so, okay. All right, moving on. Item number five, the public hearing for the proposed cemetery at Corbin Road. Let me see, I received an email requesting a continuance by the Islamic Society of Greater Worcester. At this time, we have <laughs> absolutely no information, no new information from them. So we would like to just continue this public hearing till the next month. Make a motion to continue to next month. Second the motion. I have a motion to continue and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, we will continue. The, oh, let me take a vote. I apologize. All in favor? Aye. 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 We will continue the public hearing till next month and see if in this time they provide us with any new information. Okay. Oh, let's see. Yes. Oh, I apologize. The next meeting will be Tuesday, June 21st at 6.30 p.m. Not a problem. Um, up next is old business under Earth Day which was just this past Saturday, more May 14th. We had, this was probably our best Earth Day that I can recall. 
Um, we had 69 people show up. There was over 980 pounds of garbage. This was the first year that the Webster Dudley Business Alliance um, really promoted us and got involved with us doing this Earth Day. So it was done coinciding with the town of Webster. Um, it was our first run. There were a few little glitches here and there, but I think everything went rather smoothly. Um, we had a lot of people come out, and I thank everyone who did come out and give their time. You know, we do so much. People from the town do so much, and people don't realize what we do. And there is so much that goes on behind the scenes to even get to Earth Day to be out there picking up trash. So it's hours and hours of work that we do. And I mean, we did a great job with a new clerk who's never done it before. And I wasn't able to be there and throwing Mr. Zakowski right into it. He did very well. Um, Normally I'd be out with the Cub Scouts collecting trash. Instead I was at the And I appreciate um, that. Barn. Because I was trash. <laughs> collecting <laughs> trash. <laughs> um, it, it's, so I just really thank everybody, and I thank the Webster Dudley Business Alliance. They really promoted it for us, and it'll be promoted even more next year. We'll be ready to go on that. Any other old business? Okay. Any new business? It's I, Jay's last meeting. It is Jay's last meeting. So um, do we have... Your pony is outside. <laughs> <laughs> Should I stick it in the envelope? Yeah. Yeah. Shall I lick it? Go ahead, lick it. <laughs> Jay, um, <laughs> I licked it. This is Jay's last meeting. He has chosen not to rerun for the position of Board of Health. He's been on the past three years. Um, done a fine job. I've enjoyed having you as my right hand man. See, I told you you had mm -hmm. my pen. Um, I, it's been a pleasure. Um, Thank you. You'll go on to great things, I'm sure, and I'll still I'll still see you around. Absolutely. Um, so we do appreciate that. And at the next meeting, we will hopefully have a new board of health member. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> very interesting. She could have the same last name. <laughs> well, elections are tricky things. <laughs> so we um, I, we just. We just want to thank you. You know, you've put a lot into it. We appreciate it, and thank you. And we're sorry to hear that you did not want to rerun and spend some more time with us and have all this fun on Tuesday nights. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> but the Scout Committee is going to really enjoy eating them up. Yes, there's other opportunities that will be. <laughs> you'll, you'll still be busy, I'm sure. Um, Speaking of which, if anyone uh, has any th items they'd like to donate to the Boy Scout uh, yard sale, um, see me after the meeting. Did you already accept the minutes? Yes, yes, we did. You were sleeping through that part? <laughs> <laughs> um, so anything else under new business? Go ahead, Jay, make your last motion. Do I need to? See if there's any. Excuse yep. Me. Yes. Richard Raymond, Corbin Road. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for your three years of service. You know, it's a, it's a very difficult position to be in from time to time, and uh, we appreciate your efforts. And you know, I wish you well, whatever your endeavors are. And yes, my wife has already contacted the Boy Scouts to me pick up. So awesome. <laughs> uh, the only thing I, I want to bring up, and this is something new, okay, under Article 5, there was, I mean, under your, your item number 5 that you, you moved right on to Article, uh, yeah, I mean, Agenda Number 6, is that I, sitting here tonight, I was, I was hoping to hear from the group that asked for the continuance, but they got the continuance, so obviously we're not going to hear for the third, third month in a row. And, uh, you know, I take that a little bit as a, slap in the face but that's neither here nor there that's the politics of everything and we'll deal with that as time goes on however in listening to some of the stuff that went on with uh nail salons and vapor parlors and stuff like you know very serious uh, stuff and, and you know very serious health concerns and stuff like that 
and the fact that the board is going to be looking at regulations and policies for that i think that's a good thing uh it, it comes to mind those those areas even as you know as needed as they are are both areas of people elect to go to it's not something that's mandated to go to it's not, they're not mandated to go to a salon or vapor parlor or something like that and going back over several meetings that we've had with the board of health you know it's been my understanding there are no rules and regulations regarding cemetery and burials which is not an elective situation so as the board looks at adopting you know the rules of the policies of another city another town particularly the state capital boston for nail salons hopefully the board will also look at you know adopting other towns rules and regulations that may be of nothing uh, may be needed for what you don't have in place right now you know and that's for us you know burials and cemeteries that would absolutely so, be the intent if we don't have a regulation for something obviously we'd have to create it if it's necessary well well the only reason why i'm speaking i'm saying this tonight is because the earlier speakers you know it kind of the light went off well wait a minute elective stuff we're making policies for mm -hmm. you know well we can't elect to die i mean you know it's unfortunate and I, and, I, and, I, and i and once again i will say wholeheartedly as i said every time i spoke on this subject this is not a situation of dudley doesn't want a cemetery i think it's where should the cemetery be located if it's going to be in dudley at all okay so other than that thank you for your time unless anybody's got any questions no, and it, understandable that if we were having a discussion, things would come up during that discussion. But at this time, there is there is no we we cannot have a discussion. Regarding Understood. Anything. You don't have any information to work with, I, and I certainly understand oh, that. But we do appreciate that. Okay. Yeah, obviously, if any regulation would occur. There's many many uh, questions outstanding that would go into helping define some of those regulations. So, yes. okay. just like uh, so, I don't want to say any topic is. Uh, more simple than another, but some are more simple than others. For, for instance, if it's elective, if it's uh, already well known, if it's, you know, there's a lot of reasons why some of these things that we do go quicker and then some things like cemeteries go much slower for the un right un reasons. Understood. Yeah. I, it was just, you know, it would be just became visible tonight based upon, you know, early, earlier stuff. And once again, thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take one more, but again, we can't have discussion right, regarding no, I know. it. I was, I was just going to have you for, uh, forming a committee to make rules of Steve Borowski, Carbon Road, Dudley. Uh, making the rules for cemeteries and burials now. Why wait? The you reason don't have to wait for them. It's, I think it's your prerogative to do it now. To get started on it. <clears throat> things, things are being done that we again not everything can be openly discussed okay um in the sense of we have sent requirements out to them that we feel would be a good starting block for us for regulations yeah i'd, I'd word that sl slightly different way i'd say we're doing the research the background you. research to in order to collect um uh, the the skeleton of a regulation and there's since there's many many pieces to that it, we require lots of different information from a lot of different sources and a lot of that is going on we're requesting a lot of information from town council a lot of information be, a lot of research being done by members of this group and and others so a absolutely it's it's just not that not that easy not that quick I know yeah why wait till the horse is out of the barn it's, but it is. <laughs> Do your rules and regulations now and tell them they We are being advised by yeah. town council as to how to handle the entire situation. And that's why we have town council because we can't do certain things can't be done out of turn. We're not necessarily waiting for them to create a regulation. Right. We're, at, we're waiting for them to answer questions about so we have better definition of what's going on. To create a regulation, we're also doing research in if, order to create regulations. For some regulation. reason or another, they pull out. I still think it behooves you. There will still be regulations being yeah. made. Yeah. We are in talks with town, count, town yeah. council okay. regarding that. One way, one way or the other, we okay. see there's a gap to yeah. what we have to what we thank, need. And thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank and, you. And we also don't really need a subcommittee to the committee because we are the committee. 
Yes. Did yeah. he yeah. place yeah. to do it well, as needed, elected? I was a cemetery commissioner for nine years, and Mr. Canty, who was on the uh, Zoning board. board of Appeals, he was for 12 years, so between us is 21 years of experience. So I'm sure you have plenty of ideas that you'll be submitting to the Board of Health at some point. Well, if, if it's submitted, I will submit plenty of it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. I have a motion to adjourn at, let's see, 7.03 and a second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Adjourned 7.03 p.m. Jay, thank you very much. You're welcome.